Investing in real estate as a means to an end is our first topic on the program this morning. Also, P and ID court rejects federal government's corruption claim against Sashore, former Lagos AG. And of course, we'll be looking at uh, some of the headlines that made it to the front pages of our national dailies. Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on the show this morning. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. It's a Wednesday morning and it promises to be a very wonderful day. Every day, uh, like the scriptures say, was made by God and God saw that it was good. And so we are hoping that today is going to be good. Let's tap into that anointing as the men of God will say. Uh, today is Wednesday and... Uh, um, a lot of things can happen on a Wednesday. We've survived Monday and Tuesday. Why can't we survive today? And if we can survive today, then Thursday and Friday will just be a walkover. And then, before we know it, it's suddenly a weekend. We're going to the top trending right now. Some of the things that really caught our fancy in the last 24 hours. So top trending will be coming up uh, just now. In the meantime, we'll take a short break and return in a moment. Stay with us. Okay, uh, like we said, uh, top trending things, things that caught our fancy in the last 24 hours. FCC chairman orders staff to declare assets. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, Ola Olukoyede, has directed staff of the commission to declare their assets. Olukoyede, who gave the directive at the headquarters of the Anti-Graft Agency in Abuja on Tuesday, October 24, said it is in line with civil service regulations and procedures. Um, they, he stated that fighting corruption required those at the vanguard to be above board. The EFCC chairman said, and I quote, all of us are going to declare our assets from 1117 downward. I did mine, so there's no reason for anyone to be afraid to do the same. Even the commission secretary did. You all may also have done it in the past, but there's a need for all of us to do it again. We will declare our assets and we are going to investigate it. We must live above board by setting the pace with good example. As anti-corruption fighters, our hands must be clean so we must declare our assets. End of quote. I think this is a very laudable thing. Uh, starting like this, uh, my people say a dog that will be a hunting dog will be known when it is still just a puppy. So if this is the sign that the EFCC is going to leave above board in the tenor of the Olu Koye Day, uh, so be it. We pray that he succeeds. And like we've always said, EFCC is a place that... Uh, People sit there and you never know how you are going to leave the seat of EFCC. We've seen in the past how so many of the chairmen of EFCC have been more or less disgraced out of office. Whether it is really their fault or it's because of something else that is haunting them. Or like um, one of the politicians said, when you want to fight corruption, corruption fights back. I think Ngozi okonjo said that. Uh, whether that is the reason or because they really committed the crimes that we have been told that they committed is another matter entirely. But we do hope that he will succeed and they will actually live above board. Another thing that uh, caught us was uh, Justice Eberichi Wike advocates amputation of people found guilty of defiling minors. Now, the former First Lady of River State and a judge of the River State High Court, Eberichi Wike, has advocated the amputation of people found guilty of defiling minors. Uh, Mrs. Wiki stated this on Tuesday, October 24, on the sidelines of the Second National Conference of Family Court Judges, Magistrates, and other family court practitioners in Port Harcourt, the state capital. Um, she insisted that the current punishment isn't drastic enough, adding that the, the move will deter sexual offenders from molesting minors. And according to the judge, the society should step up punishments for people who defile children beyond life imprisonment or a 14-year jail term. Uh, my only problem with uh, some of these uh, 
things that are terminal, that are, are final as it is, is, because, is what if the person, after a, a long legal battle and all the appeals and a review of the case, is found not guilty and he's been amputated already? What will we do? How can we compensate for that body part that will be removed? I, I do understand that, yes, a lot of people have said that the punishment is not drastic enough, uh, but we should consider a lot of other things. Isn't amputation too drastic? Well, um, everybody has their own uh, thought. Everybody has their own reason for uh, suggesting whatever they suggested. But, well, whatever it is, let the people be brought to book in the appropriate way and let it not just be one-sided. Everybody that is found guilty of anything else should face the rot of the law according to how it is in the books. Now, federal government approves $3.45 billion World Bank loan to boost power and other sectors. The Federal Executive Council has approved a $3.45 billion dollar a World Bank loan application for the financing of five items. Uh, Mr. Wale Edun, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, disclosed this after the FEC meeting in Abuja on Monday, October 23. He said the Council approved the loan request during its meeting at the State House, adding that the federal government would begin to receive the $3.5 billion uh, zero loan. According to him, the loan is payable within 40 years with a 10-year moratorium, which means payment would start from 2033. Uh, during the briefing, the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Beta Edu, also said FEG approved the creation of a Humanitarian and Poverty Alleviation Trust Fund. The minister said the fund will help the federal government respond promptly to humanitarian situations in Nigeria and that the government hopes to raise a, at least $5 billion annually into it. Okay, um, a lot of people still cannot uh, understand why a government that said there will be almost zero borrowing in this tenure uh, will be borrowing so many things, uh, so much money to do... Um, what a lot of people think is not necessary because if you're talking about humanitarian how many people get humanitarian aid in nigeria uh, even when money is voted for that how much do we know about the trader money and uh, whatever other money that was given by the last administration how did it impact on the economy uh, of nigeria how many lives were touched by that money that was being given. How many people can be touched out of the over 200 million people that we have today? So you talk about palliatives, and we've seen, uh, seen cases where in so many states, uh, people who are given these palliatives, or who we know or we hear uh, given these palliatives, uh, have never reached a million, and there is no state that doesn't have at least five million people in, that, in them. So if you are giving 40,000 uh, people uh, these palliatives, what happens to the more than other four million plus that will not be reached? Are you saying that these people are comfortable enough that they do not need palliatives? We've also seen palliatives um, that we've spent billions on, uh, reaching communities and we heard a story of an, a particular community that had a 10 kilogram bag of rice to be shared among every family in that community. As laughable as that might be, but it's also something that should make us cry even. How can you send a 10 kilogram um, bag of rice to an entire community? Even if you're sending it to one family, how much impact will that make on that family? How much is that poverty alleviation? We've always heard the saying that instead of, teaching, instead of giving me fish, teach me how to fish. So there are things that, okay, and someone even came up to say that instead of teaching me how to fish, why not show me how to own the pond? So there are so many things that will look like, you know, you're teaching someone or you're giving some people the opportunity to own a pond. But we keep giving out these fishes to the people to eat. And once they eat, that is it. So palliatives for three months. And what happens for the rest of our lives? So I think the government should uh, uh, 
a look into issues wherever the policy has shown that maybe it is not working, then we should reverse it. There's no shame in that. But the federal government has said that um, they, um, the, Naira po the policy that uh, is for the Naira, the Naira policy uh, where everywhere else was collapsed and um, the Naira had a free uh, reign to, to, to function as it has to function in a free market, and then the fuel subsidy removal, federal government has said these two things have, uh, have given them, given the federal government whatever they wanted to achieve. And Nigerians are still asking, what is it actually that you wanted to achieve uh, by removing the fuel subsidy that has been achieved and uh, has impacted positively on the people? And then uh, the, the policy about the Naira, how has it achieved your aim when the Naira now, as we speak, is more than 1,200 Naira to the dollar. What has it really achieved? How better are Nigerians because of these policies? Is it so much a difficult thing to say, okay, you know what, uh, maybe we didn't think this through and we're going to require some more time to put some things in place that will make sure that once this thing is done the way we thought that we, we could achieve a lot of things right now, then we would know that Nigerians will be the better for it. This is uh, like the sixth month from May till now that this present administration has come. So it's like um, half a year. And if it is half a year, May, uh, June, July, August, September, October, this is the fifth month. We're going into the sixth month. So it's almost half a year since the present administration. And what has Nigeria and Nigerians benefited from the present administration. A lot of things are being put in place. Yes, foundations uh, need to be, uh, be stronger, need to take more uh, materials than the entire building. So we know that a lot of things have to go on uh, in order for us to have a good foundation. But we need to see that when this building begins to rise, we are going to have so so number of uh, rooms, so so number of recreational facilities within it and everything. We should have a plan that every Nigerian can see, and not just the elite, that will know uh, that this is a plan and this is where we are going. A lot of Nigerians do not, do not know where we are headed right now, and this government has to be transparent enough for people to believe in them. Believing in our government is a very critical factor for any government to succeed, because the people will key into whatever programs and policies that the government brings. After all, democracy is about the people, so how much uh, do the people really contribute or how much do they even understand what is going on? We need to have that conversation all the time. How much is government, how close is government to the people to make it a democracy? Well, this is our Nigeria, and as we always say here on Plus TV Africa, no matter how bad it is, we're going to go through this as a country, and we will succeed. We believe in Nigeria and Nigerians. We have that resilient spirit, and let that resilient spirit speak for us in times of adversity. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers and what the headlines are. Stay with us.